Welcome to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. Today's story is called Like a Nail, an original story suggested by the old idiom, written for you by Daniel Hines. Thanks. Enjoy the episode. Like a Nail Once upon a time, a group of wandering families was looking for a place to live. They had all been scattered from their homes by a terrible war, and they had banded together to find someplace new. There were nearly a hundred of them, all traveling in a loose caravan. They had been camping and living on the road for weeks, but their luck was about to change. Deep in the forest, they found a little village that was falling apart. It had been built years and years ago, and then abandoned, and it was showing its neglect. The roofs were sagging in, the walls were sagging out, and the doors all hung crooked in their openings like loose baby teeth. It is perfect, said Nana, the oldest of the group and one of the most respected. It's in rough shape, said a father with a kid riding on his shoulders. But it's better than living on the road. Do you think we can fix up all these houses? The adults all gathered around and they looked through the abandoned village. It was in rough shape, but the group had brought their hammers and nails, and they were confident that they could fix any problems they came across. So we're in agreement? Someone asked, and everyone looked to Nana. We're home, Nana said, and everyone cheered. The families all split up and claimed the houses that were in the best shape. They all needed work, but they were grateful to have roofs over their heads even if those roofs were sagging a little low. To settle into the village, they formed a few groups. There were hunters and farmers to get food, gatherers who collected firewood and building supplies, and teachers to care for the kids in the group. And last of all, the town made a special group of repair people. They gave them all the tools they had brought with them from their old village. Unfortunately, all the tools they had been able to bring were hammers and nails, but that would have to be enough. In the new village, whenever someone needed help fixing up their house, they'd call the repair crew. This worked out well for a time. The people settled in, routines were established, and the repair crew used their hammers and nails to shore up walls and roofs and crooked doors. They made the houses livable again, and everyone was thankful. In fact, they were so useful that people got in the habit of calling them whenever they needed help. And that's when the trouble started. Because one morning, there was a sudden crash and tinkle of shattering glass. Help! I need help with my house! called Mr. Midge. Of course, the repair crew was there in a flash, their hammers and nails at the ready. What seems to be the problem, sir? asked Barney, the unofficial leader of the crew. Oh, it's that darn Simpson boy, Mr. Midge said. Look at what he did to my new window. All the windows in the village were new. They had only just finished setting up their glass blowing shop, and windows had been a priority. Barney looked around. Mr. Midge had a baseball on the kitchen floor and a baseball-sized hole right through the center of his window. It wasn't hard to figure out what happened. So, can you fix it? he asked. Well, we can fix anything! Barney said, waving forward his repair crew. Let's get to it. They surged forward with their hammers and nails and got to work. They picked up all the little pieces of glass and tried to nail them back into place. Every time they swung their hammers, though, the glass would just break into smaller and smaller pieces. I don't think that's going to work, Mr. Midge said, but the repair crew ignored him. They had gotten this far with nothing but their hammers and nails, and they weren't about to stop now. We aren't about to stop now, Barney said, adding more nails and shattered glass to the jagged hole in the window. Just step back, Mr. Midge, and we'll have this fixed in a jiffy. After a few more minutes of pounding and crashing and smashing, the repair crew packed up their hammers. A job well done, Barney said. Mr. Midge looked at his window. It was mostly nails at strange angles, 
with shards of glass sort of clumped and balanced in between. It didn't look like a window as much as it did a trap you'd set for someone you really hated. Well, that's not fixed at all, he said. A job well done. Barney's voice faded away as he and the crew all but ran out the door. The last one slammed it shut, and the window fell into a thousand pieces of glass and nails and rained down onto the floor. Thanks a lot, Mr. Midge said, and went to fetch his broom. Barney and the repair crew were oblivious to the mess they'd made. They'd been fixing problems with nothing but their hammers and nails for so long now, it didn't even occur to them that they'd made things worse. We're pretty much the best repair crew ever. Barney said. Let's go find our next job. The crew cheered, and they continued down the street. Fortunately, they didn't have to wait long. Help! I need help! A young girl was crying. Quick, crew! Hammer's ready! They ran towards the sound and found a little girl sitting on the front steps of the school building. What seems to be the problem, little lady? Barney asked. The little girl looked up and wiped away tears and snot with the back of her sleeve. It's my baby doll, she wailed. I was running and I stepped on the leg and I didn't know and it pulled and it, it ripped in half. She held up a cloth baby doll with yarn for hair and shiny button eyes. It was torn in the middle and stuffing was hanging out in cloudy white puffs. Can you, can you fix it? She snuffled. We can fix anything, Barney said, and the repair crew held up their hammers and nails and cheered. The girl handed over her doll and the crew got to work. They thumped and thacked and chunked and chacked and wonked and whacked, and then finally, beaming with pride, they held up the doll. Good as new, they said, cheering themselves again. The doll was pounded to shreds. The cloth body was attached to the legs by a row of jagged nails. The button eyes were broken, and even the yarn hair had been pulled loose and knotted. The little girl took the doll back and hugged it close. Thank you. Oh, ouch. The nails hurt to cuddle, and she's all dirty and wrecked. Another job well done. Well, you didn't fix any. A job well done, Barney said as the repair crew cheered and hurried away, leaving the sad little girl in their wake. This kind of thing kept happening over the next few weeks. The repair crew would do their job and nail up old doors and hammer straight bent walls, but they also came to other people who asked for help. A busy woman asked for help getting the tomatoes to grow in her garden, and they nailed the plant into the dirt. A young man asked for help tuning his guitar, and they nailed the strings to the pegs, and it sounded like an angry cat from then on. The school even called for help repairing their squeaky swings, and when they came in the next day, the swings were nailed to the supports and couldn't move at all. People were starting to grumble, and everything came to a head when Nana's prized cow got out of her pen. Help! she called, standing by the gate. Someone! I need help! Of course, the repair crew heard the cry and made their way over as fast as they could. What seems to be the problem? Barney asked, holding up his hammer, his crew behind him. Well, I don't need you, Nana said. She had heard how the repair crew was helping around the village, and she wasn't in the mood. My cow, Muella, busted out of her pen, and I think she's sick. At this point, they had attracted a small crowd of people from the village. Nana pointed, and everyone saw Muella lurching around the field. The cow was the size of a couch, but no couch had ever looked so flush and angry. Some of the farmhands were trying to grab her, but she was enraged and would try to charge them like a bull when they got close. Well, let's get her, said Barney, and his repair crew all cheered. No, Nana cried. She's sick. You can't fix this with a hammer. 
That's where you're wrong, bucko, Barney said. I can fix anything with a hammer, including that cow. He ran after the cow and his repair crew ran after him, hammers and nails at the ready. Muella dodged this way and that, bowling a few of them over and mooing furiously. Leave her alone, Nana said. You're going to hurt her. We're going to fix her. At that moment, Barney cornered Muella against some bushes. He set a nail against her rump and then lifted his hammer. Don't you do that, Nana cried. This will work, he shouted. This always works. No, it doesn't, said Mr. Midge. You ruined my window and left a mess. And you wrecked my doll, said the little girl, holding up her nail-studded friend. And my tomatoes. And my guitar. And our swings. Barney held his hammer in the air, his crew at his back. What? We fixed all those things. We're helpers. We help. You love it. We don't, Nana shouted. Just because you have those hammers, you think every problem is a nail to smash. The problem isn't a nail. It's a cow. Oh, you'll thank me later, Barney said. He started to swing the hammer down, but Muella wasn't having it. With a bullish, bullish, she stampeded forward and trampled Barney into the mud. The other repair crew members took one look and scattered, dropping their hammers in their rush to get away. Someone call a vet for Muella, Nana said, and get that dolt out of the mud and make sure he isn't hurt too badly. The village leapt into action. Soon, the cow had her medicine and was back in the barn, and Barney was propped up in a rocking chair a melting bag of ice held against a nasty lump on his head. So, Nana said, sitting down and handing Barney a fresh bag of ice. Did we learn a lesson? I guess, Barney said, blushing. You guess what? I guess you can't fix everything with a hammer, he said begrudgingly. But what do you expect? Everyone needs help. You call us all the time, and all we have are these hammers. Well, that's not true, said Nana gently. You have hammers, sure, but you also have your brains and your hands and your heart and lots and lots of other things, too. Sometimes when people are asking for help, they need you to use one of those tools instead. But how will I know which tool to use? Well, you'll just have to slow down and ask questions and then figure it out. They sat in silence for a while. Well, I guess I never thought of it like that, Barney admitted. Well, I didn't think you had, Nana said with a smile. Now why don't you come on in? I baked some fresh chocolate chip cookies. Barney looked up with a smile. With milk? Sure, if you want to bother Muella for it. Maybe just the cookies, then. See, you're wiser already. They both laughed and then went inside to eat. The End Thanks for listening! 